There's a common theme here when someone keeps your car too long. How do you break that button? And that's, all this stuff was fine. The check engine light is on. And this. How do you, how do you, how do you fuck? Also, I am the flying car drained America use my energy to charge the power grid. I am homeless in a towed car after parading through the streets. This is what this dumb bitch did to the car. There, there is a certain pathology. The rest of this video will be coming shortly. I rent it to a fucking hippie. And it's going to be strange. Just go ahead and turn that around. They completely fucked that up. Yeah. I mean, it was like it had so much of it on the sides where it goes into the console. Like it someone had just stuck. dumped something in there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they dumped it. But... All right. This is my BMW X5M. And this controller is roughly in the same place as it is on the other X5. Now, if you will notice, it slopes down. So if I had a drink right here and I knocked it over, it would go down. Essentially, what you saw in that video was it was literally dripping. It's like someone had just poured something over it and kept pouring it over there. And I think that they messed up that control module on purpose because there's some messed up people. They're messed up people. But there's no way, because in essentially, um, with the other X5, it doesn't even have this. It all is like wood and it slopes down. So if something spilled, it would like flow that way. It wouldn't just, I mean, it took work to get that liquid in that control module. It really did. Okay, boys and girls, today, we end the week on a high note. The week started off pretty crappy, as you can see, but it got better. It got, it got, a, it got a lot better. Okay, let's start off with the beginning of the week. Today is Friday and I woke up Monday and I saw that I had not one, not two, not three, not four, but seven cars late out of 17 rentals. Pretty much almost 50%. So I got, I got really, I got pissed off. And I was like, you know what? This is gonna stop happening and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do something about this week. So I messaged a few people and they paid up. And we went from seven cars late to four cars late. One of the four cars late was the nasty BMW. And also, let me go ahead and tell you what I did today. Um, well, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but we'll start with the BMW. I actually sent her the pictures and I sent her like a six paragraph text message cussing her out and telling her what a worthless person she was. I was like, how could you do this? I went off on her, sent her the pictures, and there's a little control module. And this is the thing. Like, I've been driving BMWs, and the cup holder is below the control module. So I think that someone deliberately poured something on that control module to mess it up. And I told her that. And I told her that she was a messed up person and it felt good. So I got real active on the four. So I got the BMW back. Actually, it was all BMWs. Uh, let's talk with, before we get into the main story, let's talk about, we saw the nasty chick, cussed her out, got the BMW back, got the BMW fixed. And also, here's a little bit more. 
I was doing some research and if I trade out of the BMW, I'm going to take like a $4,000 hit, kind of, sort of, because it was, uh, it was 18,000 and I had an $1,800 repair. Well, 1,500. So that put me at 20,000 on this rental before she became a yard bird. I made 2,000 minus the 800, so I'm 1,200. So what I did last night, I had a GPS, uh, kill switch installed in that vehicle and I'm going to rent it out for two or three more months before I get rid of it because we're not in the business of losing money. Uh, when I made that video, I was really emotional. I was pissed off, but my business sense is starting to kick back in and I'm like, okay, uh, I got a lot of people who, cause essentially when I was in the mind to get rid of it, I had a lot of people who wanted to rent it. And then once I put that kill switch in it and I, I'm telling you, um, I have the X5, an Acura, and another BMW. And by Monday, I'm going to have three more kill switches installed because, you know, it was a holiday weekend. It was a short week, so we couldn't get a lot of stuff done. But I'm going to have six kill switches in my high problem cars by Monday. So I'll even do a whole video about that. So I got the BMW back and let's go ahead and talk about this other dude. Now, this guy, he was essentially lying to me. He was saying that his account was blocked. I would call a hire car and they would say the account's fine. And he was just, I don't know why he was lying. I don't know what he, what he was going to get out of this. I mean, cause essentially, um, I was like, you know, hire car, you can't pay. And I got slick and I have a square account. So I sent him an invoice and he didn't pay it. And my next say, all right, okay, I sent you an invoice. You didn't pay it. I don't think you have the money. I don't think that your account's blocked. I think that you're just riding around my car and you're not paying me. And if you don't bring it back by 4 PM, I'm going to call the police. Then all of a sudden he got real active and me and my assistant had to go get the car. And once again, the check engine light was on, the ABS light was on, some other stuff was on. And I, I sent him a message saying, how come you didn't let me know that this was going on with the car? And he gets salty. Understand, he owes me money. Understand, he's not paying me. And he had the nerve to get salty. And he was like, hey, you got your car back, F off. And at that point, I went slap off on him. Boom, 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 boom. I told him about himself. I told him that his mama was a sorry whore for having such a worthless child, went straight off on him. And he was like, whoa. And I was like, fuck you. Then I blocked his ass. And essentially, like I said, I'm not dealing with this crap because essentially I see where it is going. So I cussed him out and good news is I took the BMW in to get his service and a few wires came along and it's literally a $200 repair. I'm like, yes. So essentially he didn't wreck the car. He just had it without paying, but I got it back. Another guy, and this is probably the quickest I've gotten the car back because the guy rented the car and he was late. Like literally after his payment, he went into late status and I was like, so I got that car back in five days. And two of those days he paid for. So I went ahead, I sent out the demand letter and I found out his address was funky. If you're running a hire car, you might want to do this before you approve someone. You want to call the number that they have on their uh, account. And if that number don't work, don't rent to them. And I'm about to tell you why. So, you know, and he actually smoked in the car but he didn't wreck it. There were no lights on. Uh, once again, all three of them, all four of them, three of them, three of them, gas tank on E, the BMW being the worst. So I go ahead and I fill up the car. It's like 58 bucks. I get it washed and cleaned. It's fine. It's at the shop. It's the next in line to get the GPS. And I'm gonna put the GPS kill switch on the Mercedes. And I have another BMW, the other BMW that's in the shop. It'll be out Monday. 
So come Monday, I will have six GPS kill switches and GPS on, the, on problematic cars. So let's get into the headliner show. I rent this car to this hippie. And my assistant, because I was teaching my assistant how to you know, process the cars and stuff, and my, you know, I told my sister what happened. She was like, her? She doesn't look that, like that type of person because uh, one of the things is I'm including pictures. I might do a whole video of pictures because essentially that's her. That's her. And I just do, blacked out her driver's license number and her address and stuff, which she incidentally don't live in. She doesn't live there because uh, she's homeless. Now, here's what gets me. She's homeless and she's renting a BMW for 60 bucks a day. I actually, when she became late, I said, look, I got a Camry that would be better. The Camry's 35 bucks. And she didn't want the camera. She says, I like the German cars. I like a BMW for some Mercedes. And I started to have some really weird conversations with her because I was trying to get her into the Camry because I felt that was more affordable. And she was like, and then she's like, I need my car. That was her exact text. I need my car. And I hit her up. I was like, that ain't your car. That's my car that I'm renting to you. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So we go on and we go on and we go on. And I thought that she was going to be the first person to get arrested because I actually filed a police report on her. And essentially, since now I know how this works and I know how to get it going much, much, much faster. Uh, essentially, when I reported it, they immediately put the car in the system as a stolen car. Found it within 27, 28 hours. And what did this chick do? Instead of bringing the car back, like an adult, she just left it somewhere with the key in it. She just left it somewhere. So I had to go to Willard Toy, pay 165, pay, well, fortunately the Uber wasn't surging. My Uber was only like 15 bucks. It was fairly close. And I had to pay cash because they didn't take credit cards. Fortunately, I had cash on me and I had to get my car out. And then I get in the car and what you saw in the beginning, it's like she had pressed, pressed the window and hazard button all the way in, all the way in. And then she had messed up one of the automatic temperature control buttons on the other side. I don't know how these people are messing up these switches and things. And like I said, with the BMW, I told, I was like, you, I think you did that on purpose with your sorry ass. Now, fortunately, that vehicle was rented under the 70% protection plan. So um, the key was messed up. So I hit her with a key, $800 for the iDrive, a hundred bucks for gas and the cleaning. I got an email, I'm getting 150 bucks for the gas and cleaning and they're still going through with the key and other stuff. But with the 50, with the 70% protection plan, I should get 250 for the key and uh, 800. So essentially I'm going to get back money. I'm not gonna, you know, I made, once I get that money back, then I go back to making $2,000 on this rental before she became late. And like I said, I got real personal and I talked about her so-called player, player boyfriend. I said, he's sorry. You, you up here laying with a dude that can't pay for a car rental. How stupid are you? This dude is renting cars, not one, but two cars. Because how I know it, his name, they took it to BMW for an oil change. And they actually got an oil change. And then there was some other stuff about the car driving funny. I've driven the car. It drives the same way it drove when I ran it to her. I don't know what they were talking about. But this hippie, I mean, strange, 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 strange person. Strange, strange person. So this 
to me is a good sign that I've turned a corner because I ain't gonna lie with that Porsche. I felt absolutely helpless. I didn't know <clears throat> what was going to happen. I thought I just rolled it off. I thought I was never going to get the car back. I thought I was going to get a check for stolen vehicle. And this week I'm starting to claim power again because, um, the Acura rented out and it has a GPS kill switch on it. So she, she rented it for two days. One day she's late, that car goes off. And I was having the conversation with my account rep and um, he was telling me some stuff that I found very interesting. Maybe you will find it as interesting as I did. He was like, I've been checking you out. I've been checking out your videos. And I was like, this is a guy who could do this business. He just told me, he said, a lot of owners get in this business and they're not prepared for this business. And all of you who are talking about charge their credit card. These folks don't have credit cards. <laughs> this is the bottom half of, I mean, all right. You don't have the credit situation where you can buy a car. All right, that's the first thing. I do have a few people who rented cars because they didn't want to put miles on their cars. So they were different and they typically rent it by the week. So he was telling me, he's like, I was like, you know, I, I could tell he, 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 you know, he, he may sound slick and smooth on YouTube, but I could tell that there, there's something about him because he was telling me that for me to come on the platform and within um, two months, like the majority of my cars are rented or my cars stay rented. They come back in, they go back out. Like right now, I got the BMW X5, I got the 530, I got an Acura TL, the Range Rover, and BMW, I got six cars in. This weekend, the BMW is gonna go, the TL is gonna go. So this weekend, I'm gonna have three cars rented out, and then when I get those cars back next week, they will go out. Um, and he said, I've never seen anyone get this. He said, what you did was smart. Contrary to the moist men crowd here on YouTube, man, you move too fast, man. You shouldn't have spent that money, man. You should have did this, man. You should have bought cars with warranty on that note, go to the higher car platform and look at what's on there and see how many cars have warranty. The majority of the cars on the platform don't have warranty. Uh, I, I saw this one moist man, you started wrong, you should have used credit. And once again, if you're not in this business, you can't talk to me. I've seen so many things wrong, like the most you should spend is $4,000. Hello, we're in a used car shortage. Dealers are playing retail price at auction to get inventory. You can, and also a $4,000 car is just going to be trash. It's going to be a car with 200 and some thousand miles on it. And it's going to be a lot more problems than what I'm already having. And a lot of you are Monday back quarterbacking because you're like, well, if I was in this position, I would do it this way. And you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because you're not in the position. You're not doing it. Um, a lot of you, and also shout out to the people who support this channel. I actually got messages from many of you who were saying that you were pissed off, your feelings were hurt at what this bitch did to my BMW X5. So shout out, thank you. The majority of the uh, comments were supportive. You were outraged, you were pissed off. You were like, I don't believe this. So but there's a, there's a little segment of you moist, jealous ass men who don't have no money, never done shit in life, and more than likely before you die, you will never do shit in life. You wanna know why? Because you are a scared little bitch. I'm like out here showing you how real business is done, warts and all, and also go ahead and Google. I've been talking to some people. I ran into a girl who works for Hertz. 
we I was out telling my story and she was like, honey, they ain't nothing. I work at Hertz. This girl started telling me the, the craziest thing that happened is this customer brought back a car without a steering wheel. He was driving the car with some pliers. And he want, and he act like ain't nothing was wrong. He just turned the car in and he was like, oh, really? The steering wheel's missing? And the pliers were still on the steering wheel post. How do you lose the steering wheel? And she was telling me, we file thousands of stolen car reports. See, y'all are like under this impression that I'm the only one going through this. I'm not. I, this was confirmed by my um, hire car rep. He was like, he said, a lot of owners don't have the mentality for this business. They don't want to shut the cars off. They don't want to put GPS kill switches on. And then uh, like the guy, Justin Brubaker, who was doing all these hire car videos, I guarantee you he's out of it. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. He ain't doing this no more. I guarantee you he's out of it. He don't have no cars on the platform because this is one of the things I've seen. There are some good people on hire car. I'm gonna say 70%, 70% of the people on hire car are good. They will take care of your property. When they're not using it anymore, they'll bring it back, they'll be cool. And now you got this 30% of yard birds. That's where you need the GPS trackers. That's why you need the kill switches. And I am built for this because a lot of you, y'all, I mean, I got like 3,000 videos on this channel. So it would literally take you years to watch all my videos. So y'all don't know how I used to get down on these clowns. I used to cuss people out on the regular. And that part of me has returned because I cussed out the monkey who rented the BMW 535i and had the, and I was like, how dare you even have the nerve to get upset when your bitch ass owe me money? You must have this game misunderstood. You're in the wrong. You don't have the money. You weren't paying me. You kept the car like a selfish little bitch. I told him that in exact words. And he was like, whoa, I went off on him. And then I went off on the BMW chick and I went off on Tiffany. And I was like, you dumb bitch. Why didn't you just bring the car back? You just left it somewhere, costing me almost $200 to go retrieve my car versus bringing it back like a considerate and decent person. Your mother must be very, very ashamed of you because you are a worthless bitch. Because essentially, there are some of you who are like trying to say that it is the name of the company. Really? Really? Matt Daddy Media in 2017 got me five, four, $50,000 a month clients. Mac Daddy Media. Mac Daddy Media. Mac Daddy Media. It ain't the name. It's the people and it's the cars. Because somebody, uh, you know, I own no business, but I know psychology. Your name, it ain't the name. Because you know how I know this? If it was the name, I would have had the same kind of problems with Mac Daddy Media. I didn't have those kind of problems with Mac Daddy Media. It is the cars, and I'm moving away from those cars. So, like I said, I'm going to rent the X5 for three or four months and then get rid of it. I got the, this white BMW 550. She just jacked it up. And here's the thing. Like, these little things are really expensive to fix. So she didn't pay me, then she broke the car. So I'm getting rid of the Mini. I'm getting rid of this white BMW. Uh, I got a list and I got a procedure on how I'm going to get rid of these cars. And right now, I only have one car late. And this guy said, and this guy did a month long rental. And he said that his credit, his wallet was stolen. So he's waiting to get his credit cards. And I know, and I'm going to say I believe him. You want to know why? Because every time I contact him, he answers. He doesn't hide. He doesn't run away. And uh, that's the only car that I have that is late right now. And this weekend, probably those three cars are gonna go out and we'll be cooking with gas because I'm learning how to manage this business. But 
one of the things, if you're renting a hire car and someone is brand new to the platform and their number doesn't work, don't rent to them. I did not find out her number didn't work until I tried to contact her and it, it was like, this number is disconnected. And she just signed up. That lets me know that she was trying to finesse. And uh, I sent her the, and like, I didn't wait like I did with Darius. I didn't wait because essentially if I had sent Darius the demand letter and uh, called the police report like three weeks earlier, I would have had my car back much, much quicker. So one of the things I've learned is to be very, very proactive. Like I said, Monday, I had seven rentals late. This today, I got three of my cars back. And one of the cars, none of the cars I got back have GPS kill switches, but I'm kind of debating, am I going to put a GPS kill switch? I might as well put it in the white BMW and rent it out until I get the title. Because um, I got my little system. I'm going to do a whole video on the GPS system and the thing is, and it's kind of pretty sweet, but I'm learning how to run this business. And the hire car rep, he said, you came in and you bought a lot of cars really, really quick. And he said, for you not to be a large corporation, he said, that's very impressive. And he said, I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. He's like, I've been here four years. I've seen a lot of stuff. And he said, you are adapting much quicker than a lot of the other owners. Because once again, people are watching these YouTube videos thinking that this is passive income. It ain't passive. Like today, I got up, I went out at 8.30, and I've been out all day. Uh, I was taking cars. I picked up the X5 because the GPS was installed last night. Uh, dropped off to 3.30 for a GPS. I'll get that back Monday, and then I'm gonna take the Mercedes, and then I'm gonna take the other BMWs, and I'm gonna get the GPS on the BMWs because that's where the problems are. That's where the problems are. But this girl, I, I feel good for cussing her out because here's the thing that you don't see with the lower segment of society, common decency. And a lot of these people have had some really messed up backgrounds some circumstances, but the lack of consideration, all three cars came back on E and I'm going to get that money back from higher car. So I'm not worried about the gas. So essentially I'm going to go back to where I made 2000 on the BMW and I'm going to rent it out a little bit more so I can get ahead of that, um, cost curve and probably sell it. And then, you know, if it continues to perform, I might keep it because, uh, but the Range Rovers, which are interesting, I got one Range Rover back that I want to get rid of. And it's actually the fastest Range Rover I have. That sucker is like, it surprised me how fast it was. But I'm getting rid of that. So the Range Rover, the white BMW, because depending upon what they tell me what's wrong with it, Range Rover, white BMW, the Mini. And I, I think I have a Camry that I want to get rid of. Because right now we're in phase two where we're just consolidating learning lessons and reshuffling the fleet because uh i'm gonna be in phase two the july august possibly even september because by september i will have all the repair cost. well this month i'll have all the repair costs paid uh this month i've already made almost four thousand dollars and i got No, almost five, almost five. And um, just depends upon how these other cars run out because here's the game. You got to get your cars from these yardbirds who want to keep your cars and not pay you. Once again, I don't know what kind of game they're playing because I was talking to my sister. She said, I would be like freaking out a nervous wreck. I got someone's car and I'm not paying them. And I'm like, yeah. And like Dennis Reed with his bitch ass. He was just set up. I don't know what he was trying to do. I, I have no clue. I don't know. And the rep told me, he said, a lot of these people have no end game. They just start doing stuff and hope it works out. Hope it works out because uh, it, it's crazy. And what I've learned is when these people have your vehicle 
and they're not paying you, they're going to mess it up. Uh, essentially, the 335, that's a $200 repair. The 330, which I got back really quickly, there was no damage done to it. It was just dirty and it didn't have gas. There was no damage done to it. And part of that is because I got it back so quick. And once again, uh, I'm probably not going to put the GPS kill switches on the Camrys. Um, it just kind of depends, you know, how it goes because I got 20 and I'm going to use six real quick. I'm going to use six real quick. And then just depends like whatever. Cause also, you know, since we're having this conversation, I'm going to buy a different kind of car. Um, I'm learning what works and what doesn't work. And I might buy some more Camrys. There's a Camry I'm supposed to look at. There's another BMW that needs a transmission. They're looking for the transmission. So right now I'm just kind of managing the fleet, managing the business, managing me and managing expectations because um, this week, like I'm, I'm being real firm. And like, once again, I had like one, two, three people this week who wanted that Mercedes. There ain't no way in hell I am sending out that Mercedes without a GPS kill switch. It will have a GPS kill switch come Monday. I am not sending that out because look at what happened. Because I think the psychology is I'm driving it like it's my car, but it's not my car. So I don't give a damn. I mean, I intentionally think that someone messed up that I drive on purpose because the guy, uh, I will probably slide that clip in and it, I'm like that there just no way that that, like if you knock a cup, like, okay, with a BMW, the consoles are sloped. So if you had knocked the cup open, it would have rolled down the sides. I think someone intentionally did that. I think someone intentionally did that. And that's what I told that stupid cow. And part of it is, what I'm learning is, you know, I don't think, like, Dennis Reed, when I cussed him out, he wasn't ready for that. You know, because my communication has been business-like, professional, but when I let him see who I can be, he was shocked. And also, I said some, you know, he's gay, and I actually said something about that. I don't care, because essentially, if you're costing me money, I'm not going to respect you. I'm not going to be kind to you. I'm not going to be nice to you. I'm not going to be professional. That goes out the window. And what I've learned, and like one guy, I threatened to call the police on him. I was like, look, the car needs to be back. And he brought the car back last night because essentially I got so busy getting these GPS kill switches in because I was going to call the police at four. But, you know, it, before I knew it, it was like 8.30 at night. And I was like, look, if that car isn't there in the morning when I wake up, I am calling the police. And I'm going to do it first thing in the morning. I, will, I go over there, the car is there. And it's just dirty. And I, I have to reiterate, there's no smoking in the cars. I told him no smoking. He smoked in the car. So this one was dirty, you know. He drove it, but he didn't wreck it. He didn't damage anything. And there's nothing going on with it. So uh, I will get the gas money back. I will get the cleaning fee back and rent it out to someone else next week because that car is at the shop getting the GPS kill switch probably Monday. And then I'm gonna take the Mercedes over there and get the GPS kill switch and then I'm going to take the other BMW, get the GPS kill switch. And I might buy a car this weekend to replace the Porsche. Actually, I might buy two cars this weekend. I haven't really decided because like I can't get the GPS kill switches in until next week. So if I buy it Saturday and it sits Sunday and I get the switch put in Tuesday, that's not too long of a wait. Uh, that, that doesn't bother me. It just uh, one place I called, they were like, it's gonna be four weeks before we can get to your first car. And we need to know, and like, y'all don't know my pain, because a lot of y'all was like, GPS kill switches, like it was this easy thing to do. But once again, you're not in this business, so you really don't know. 
you can assume like I did. When I got into business, I had a lot of false assumptions. I, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. I had no clue. But now that I'm learning, and once again, I, w I managed to um, get all my cars back fairly quickly. There was nothing, like the Porsche was gone over a month. And this time, uh, the longest one was the BMW that was eight days. And I started putting pressure on her day three and she just ignored me until I sent her that demand letter. And I learned the demand letter is what got Dennis Reed, Thomas Passmore to respond. So I've learned something. So in the future, because like I said, I, I, I'm thinking about not putting the GPS kill switches on the Camrys. I've not had any of these problems with the Camrys. And when they get to, our, you know, the, the guy who even, well, the bumper was hanging off. Funny story about him. He sent me an email. He was like, it was trash because I filed a claim on him. You want to know how he know I filed a claim on him? He tried to rent another car. And what, to hire cars credit, when someone does what the BMW chick did, what this Tiffany Harris did, what they can never rent another car on that platform. So they can't do this to someone else because I mean, you pretty much have shown them what you're going to do. And like literally, uh, the girl that was handling my case, when I sent, I sent them pictures, she was like, Oh my word. I mean, anyone that I show these pictures, no one can believe that they trashed that car like that. People like, who are these people? And once again, many of you, I think you're trying to help. So I'm not going to run roughshod over you, but these people don't have credit cards. They don't have bank accounts in the car. I found a meta bank debit card for this Tiffany Harris. She didn't have a bank account. She didn't have a car. She's homeless. She is Coco for crazy puffs. And, um, this is who I'm going to be dealing with. And this is why the GPS kill switches are mandatory for your nicer inventory. Notice what I said. I've not had this problem with one Camry. I've not had this problem. I've had the problem with two Acras, but I managed them. I managed to uh, get both of them back. So probably when they come back, I'm already going to put the GPS kill switches in those and I'm probably going forward going to buy nicer cars because here's the thing. Instead of renting for one year, I'm going to rent them for two years. So the first year, the few, first few months, just getting my money back. And then after that, it's nothing but 100% profit. To all of you who feel that you can finance vehicles and make money and make profit, you are financially illiterate as hell. I've seen that comment where you can find like, all right, you finance a car and you don't use the money to pay off the car. You're misusing the money and it's going to come back to haunt you. It's going to come back to haunt you. But, um, yeah, I've learned a lot of lessons. Uh, I feel that we, like I said, we have turned the corner this week because I'm not going to give this up. I've only been doing it nine going on 10 weeks. This is the gauntlet, man. This, this is how most businesses start. They're not pretty. They're not sexy. They're not easy. There is a, a learning curve. And once again, I got to learn this business and people are like, why can't you just hire someone? Hire someone to do what? I'm still learning the business. How can I like do this, do this? By doing it, I can create the SOPs and the policies. Like once again, these kill switches. One day late, I turn it off one day. We're not going to go two days and all the cars with kill switches. I have an, I have an extra key except for one, which I will get a key next week. And I just go back and get my vehicle. Cause here's the thing. Once you get in the higher car algorithm, your vehicles rent out really, really quick. So the game is to stay away from the bogues and to put your cars in the hands of the good considerate people, which is about 70% maybe 75% and then just stay away from the bulbs because essentially I've learned so much in the last 10 weeks. 
And at the record place, when I told the guy I was in the car rental business, he said, bad business. See, y'all think it's just me. A lot of you folks on YouTube are not telling you everything because it ain't just me. Car, Airbnb, car B &B, he told the truth. Uh, I've heard so many stories, like I was getting the car detailed, BMW detailed. This guy said his neighbor put his car on Turo, a Mercedes. First rental, wrecked his car. First rental. So once again, Avis, National, they're all going through this. But essentially, why they're going through this and staying in the business? Because there's money in this business. There's a lot of money in this business. And I'm going to get some of that money. So that's all I got for you guys. I will be probably starting some new training uh, the middle of the month. Look out for that. Don't buy anything. And because uh, once again, I'm starting to manage this business and manage me and manage my resources. So, you know, it, it's not nine o'clock at night. You know, it, it's, it's a little bit before seven. So. Yeah, that's what's going on. So I will see you guys in the next one. And the Porsche conclusion is probably going to drop Sunday. Probably going to drop Sunday. Because I got some more video concepts I want to put out. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.